Hello, and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. Today is Memorial Day. I am enjoying my last morning of the weekend in the Pocono Mountains. I am on the back porch, birds in the distance, nice, brisk, late May morning. I think it's about 55 degrees out here on the back porch. All right, I, I want to cover a handful of topics today. All right. And some things I've touched on already, I kind of, I don't know, tap dance, but I want to go into some, a bit more of it. First, I want to look at the Warhammer Fiction for Kids. It's coming out 2019. They're going to have two lines, one based on the Warhammer Fantasy setting, one based on the Warhammer 40K setting. I'm sure it's going to be profitable for Games Workshop. I am sure parents will be buying the crap out of this stuff. I'm sure kids will enjoy reading it. But the reality is, is it really Warhammer? And while I'm sure the bits and pieces may be, the setting can't. I mean, they may throw terms like Skaven out there, but are you really going to dig into the, what, what, what's the phrase people use for uh, Warhammer, Grimdark? Grimdark, I don't think quite really covers it. I, I've, even heroes in, in the Warhammer setting are more anti-heroes. I mean, I, part of my return to gaming was uh, playing Dark Heresy on Fantasy Grounds 2. And, and the group is a good group, and uh, Fantasy Grounds is a great uh, way to play something that's fairly chart heavy. With the charts get integrated, you know, it was a community uh, piece, it was community software. But the uh, charts were integrated right, in, right into the Fantasy Grounds 2 rule set, and it played nice and smooth, but we weren't heroes. You know, Dark Heresy, we're all pretty much uh, evil members of the cloth, I mean, tr- trying to occasionally do right, while at the same time knowing you're going to get screwed from up above. Uh, again, I-, I understand that, you know, it, this name recognition alone is going to get this property, the Warhammer Adventures, I feel they're calling it. But the... Uh, the children's property out there, I understand that. It's going to get well read, well used. It doesn't mean <laughs> it's going to be Warhammer. <laughs> just just because it says on the tin doesn't make it so. Uh, they're going to have to. And it's being aged, aimed at ages 8 to 12, which is not young adults. Those are preteens. And uh, although my seven year old niece. It's extremely mature for her age in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. Like I said, they got a lot to remove to make that child appropriate. So that's the one thing I'm, talk- I'm, I'm touching base on. Something else I want to touch base on, because I mentioned the other day the importance of being able to run deals of the day for your products on RPG Now slash Drive Through RPG using, you know, the, the, the OPS, the one bookshelf storefronts. And I came across something on, on Google Plus yesterday. And it was from James Wallace. And I thought it was very interesting because he did a postmortem on the Las Vegas as a deal of the day. It was on a weekend. So it, and it, and it went up covering Saturday and Sunday, which you, you don't choose when your product goes up. You, you you pay your points, and you get put in the queue, and where you land is not up to you. But during that 24-hour time span, uh, they would normally sell one to two items at regular price. And now they discounted the PDF by 60%. They knocked uh, $7 off the print plus PDF. So normally you sell one to two copies every 24 hours. Okay. So it's a nice steady trickle. 
131 copies sold at $6.38 a copy, down from nearly $16 cents a copy, $16 a copy. 131 plus another 16 copies of the print plus PDF. So, nearly 150 copies sold when you would normally sell one or two. That is the power, folks, of the deal of the day. It, and not only that, you get mind space. Even if people don't buy it, they saw it, you get in mind space. Um, it, it's, and if they do buy it, now you've got potential customers for your other products. I went in, I bought this, and I got a good deal on it. What else supports this? Or what else does this company put out? Because this is pretty good. Now, of course, you could be selling schlock at 50% at off or 60% off on a deal of the day. People might get it, but they and not want anything else from you. But you know what? You got their sales anyway. I'm not saying it's a good way to run it, but that's, you got their sales. Now, remember... You have to be regularly priced at two ninety five or higher to participate in the deal of the day. If your product is priced at two fifty, like Swords and Wizards Continue Light is, it's not an option. It took me a while to figure that out. Just told me you weren't you weren't able, you weren't no, no, no. And then I finally <clears throat> looked a little closer and did a little experimenting and I realized, okay. Two ninety five. And I'm at two fifty. And I'm not gonna raise the price forty five cents so that I can knock it off a buck fifty from the new price for twenty four hours. We'll wait until uh version two comes out with a lot of content and then we'll we'll price that one. Uh I had to take a short break there to deal with the morning phlegm of allergies. I don't think that's why you hear the the morning hat. <laughs> So, all right, last thing I'm going to touch on. I'm really covering far and wide bases here. But a brief thing about Kickstarters and stretch goals. Now, I could probably spend, I don't know, three 15-minute episodes talking about the do's and don'ts of stretch goals. But the basic comes down to this. If your stretch goal adds to your cost to produce whatever it is that you're kickstarting, you probably shouldn't be doing it, especially not with one of your first kickstarters, because you, you're probably haven't learned, and it's, it's a learning experience, but how to figure out your budget properly, especially if you're doing a print product. And stretch goals can certainly uh, throw a monkey wrench into that. Now, if you're dealing with stretch goals that are purely PDF, and you're the one that's writing it, and layout is going to just edit to somebody else's story doing the layout and maybe it's not going to cost you anything extra and you're using stock art that you already own the cost is time and as long as you've budgeted the time into your expected day to release your kickstarter you're fine but if you're adding print goals now if it's again yeah, if you're adding pages to a book that you're already producing physically the cost might be minimal but if you are adding extra items to that package you know, not everybody is, is Joe Goodman, where he's already got the math figured out, or or Bill Webb. Uh, these men, you can throw a situation at them in conversation and say, well, if I was doing this, with a book this size, uh, now I was going to expect to make uh, 1,200 sales, so I'd order 1,500. What price point do you think? And I'm sure either one of them could spew a number out at you within 15 seconds all in their head, but not everybody has that ability. So, if you're thinking about kickstarting something, physical stretch goals, be careful with them, especially if you're adding things like buttons, oh, or uh, higher price things like, I'm adding a mug. No, you're not. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Not unless you have the stuff already sitting in a warehouse just looking to get rid of it don't do it because it isn't going to be to your benefit alright so 
I hope you've been enjoying the birds in the background. I don't think I heard the wind chimes. It's not really windy enough, which is probably good. Like I said, it's about 55. I'm sitting in uh, short sleeves, short pants, sandals. Came out of my shower about 10 minutes before I started this. So if there was a breeze, probably wouldn't have been very beneficial to my health. You might have heard my teeth chattering on this. Alright, I'm going to try to get this up quickly. Or at least before I head back to New York this later on this morning. And, uh, alright folks, I'll see you on the flip side. And, uh, for our, our veterans, our service people, uh, those who served, those who have left service, our emergency responders, our first responders, both active, retired, those who've served a bit and moved on to other careers. And God bless you all. This is the day we should all have you in our thoughts. Later, folks.